Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about demand and supply elasticity and all the different ways we can look and think about elasticity. So first we want to think a little bit about price elasticity and all this is is a measure of how responsive quantity demanded of a commodity is to a change in its price. Right? And so we define it as the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change of price. Right, here's kind of a nice formula you can look at. And this, this is pretty important to know. Um, and you'll, you'll see not only for demand, but this is uh, important to know for supply as well. Um, and that's going to be something to keep in mind throughout the entire video, that a lot of these concepts for demand will be um, relatable to supply. So this is the formula for percent or for price uh, elasticity of demand. So here's an example you might want to look at, right? So the price of oil increases by 10%, quantity demanded increases by 1%, and you can go back at that uh, previous slide and look at the formula and see that you have this ratio here, and the answer is uh, minus 0.1, right? So how would we interpret this uh, this number that we just got, right? So here's here's kind of the intuition. A 10% increase in the price of oil will lead to a 1% decrease in quantity demanded, right? So that's how we kind of think about it. And we're only uh, talking about relative quantities only, right? Elasticity is measuring a change in quantity relative to a change in its price, right? It's, uh, in this case, it's always going to be negative for demand, right? Because we have a downward sloping curve. An increase in price decreases the quantity demanded, all else constant, right, ceteris paribus. By convention, we don't really look at the minus sign. If it's demand, we know it's there. Right? So here's kind of other, another way if we're talking about two price elasticity, right, or two quantity elasticity, right? We have the change in quantity divided by the sum of the, the average of the two quantities, right, over change in price divided by the average of the price, right? And that's that's going to be kind of a good way to, to calculate it, right? So here's kind of an example that you can, you know, pause and work on yourself using the previous slide. I'm assuming you've had time to uh, look at how to do it, and you've tried it out, and here's the answer, right? And work on the interpretation as well. It's, it's a good idea after you have uh, solved one of these and gotten some number to sort of write an intuition, right? It's it's a good idea to get practice with the intuition as well as the math. So now that we have some experience in uh, calculating price elasticity of demand, it's going to be kind of helpful to think about different ways of classifying it. So if the percentage change in quantity demanded is lower than the percentage change in price, right, we're going to have elastic demand, right? Total expenditures and price are inversely rated in the elastic region of the demand curve. And I'm going to have a graph here in just a second. I think we may have to cover inelastic first, but we'll come back to what that looks like, right? But that's going to be classified as elasticity, or price elasticity of demand is greater than 1, right? And then we have unit elasticity of demand, which is the percentage change quantity demanded is exactly the percentage change in price. So a total expenditure are not going to really change their variant to price changes. This is when we have a uh, demand is exactly. And then we have inelastic, right? percent change in quantity demanded is smaller than the change in its price, right? And then total expenditures and price uh, are directly related in the inelastic uh, region of the demand curve. And this is when we have uh, demand elasticity less than one. Uh, and then here's kind of a, a helpful little, little cheat slide. If you want to write something down and kind of have it on a note card, it's helpful to look at. Um, and now we want to talk about sort of the extreme cases, right? So what if we have perfectly inelastic demand? Then we have uh, a vertical line, right, straight up. Um, and it's only, you know, there's only one quantity demanded for each price. And no matter what the price is, quantity demanded will not change. Um, and this is when we have uh, elasticity demand is zero, right? The demand exhibits zero responsiveness uh, to a change. And there you go. And so we can also say we have, when we have a perfectly elastic demand, 
the uh, demand curve is a horizontal line. If there's only one price for every quantity, and then any slight increase to price will lead to no one buying anything, right? It's extremely elastic. It's perfectly elastic. And it looks like this. Right? So when demand is elastic, a negative relationship exists between changes in price and changes in total revenue. Right now we're going to think about bringing it back to revenues. When demand is unit elastic, changes in price won't change total revenues. And when demand is inelastic, a positive relationship exists between changes in price and total revenues. Right? And so here's kind of an example we can use to think about with, uh, with Microsoft and, and the and the tablets, I think the surface, yeah, the Windows Surface. So recently they reduced the price of its Surface by about 30%. Uh, during the, the, the following three months, the quantity of the Surface uh, was purchased by about 100%. Right? That's a lot. Uh, and thus we have uh, elastic demand, right? Elastic price. So we can kind of see a, uh, there, this is a table for uh, cell phone minutes. That can kind of uh, show you about uh, different regions of elasticity and unit elasticity and inelasticity on kind of a demand curve. And here is that demand curve being plotted out. Remember I was saying that there would be um, different regions on the demand curve. Well, this is what it's talking about. You have different regions where you have elastic, different regions where you're unit, different regions where you're inelastic. Additionally, here's like a uh, total revenue graph, right? We were talking about how total revenue can change for different regions of price elasticity demand. Well, here's kind of a nice graph that illustrates it with this cell phone example. And just in case some of this is going over your head, total revenues are the product of price times units sold, right? It's, it's just the money that you make from selling a product, right? And the law of demand states that uh, along a given curve, price is inverse to quantity, right? We talked about that before. So what happens to the product uh, of price times quantity depends on which of the opposing forces exerts greater force on total revenues, right? Uh, this is what price elasticity of demand is, is supposed to measure, right? How, how responsive quantity demanded is to a change in price. And here's another little uh, sort of uh, cheat slide that you can write down and think about and you know have everything nice in one place. And so here's another important thing to think about when you're thinking about uh, elasticity. It's uh, what if there are any substitutes, right? So uh, the closer uh, the substitute is to the good, right, or the more substitutes there are, then the more elastic uh, demand is, right? And it's also uh, important to think about the share of a budget, right? The greater share of the consumer's total budget that's spent on a good, the greater its price elasticity. You can kind of think about why that might be. Uh, and the length of time allowed for adjustment is also pretty important, right? The longer any price change persists, the greater is the elasticity of demand, right? Price elasticity is greater in the long run than in the short run. There's another thing you can think about, about uh, combining, you know, substitutes and length of time, right? Suppose that I ask you to go find me um, an envelope, right? I just want an envelope for a letter that I might be mailing. And you, and I say you have one hour. Well, you can run around your house or run outside maybe, depending on how close you live to a post office or, or, or maybe just Publix, you might be able to find uh, an envelope. To, to give to me, but if I give you a year to find me an envelope, then you can find any envelope in the world. You might be even be able to craft your own envelope. I didn't specify if it needed to be out of paper. It could be out of tape. You could build me an envelope, right? You have uh, a, a more, you're more inelastic as time, uh, or I'm, excuse me, you're extremely elastic as time goes on, but in the short run, you're, you're very inelastic, right? So here's another good graph about showing uh, the differences of, of changing elasticity on demand, right? So you start at, uh, you know, a fairly inelastic demand curve at D1, and you're getting more and more elastic to D2 and D3, right? Getting flatter, right? There's another good thing to think about with elasticity about cross-price elasticity, which is sort of 
getting a little more interesting. The percentage change in the demand for one good holding its price constant divided by the percentage change in price of another good, of a related good. Right? So we have another formula for that. You might want to take a look at this. And we can classify this in two different ways. So we have if cross price elasticity is positive, then we have a substitute. Right? And it has a please, uh, you know, an intuitively pleasing explanation. An increase in the price of X would increase the quantity of Y demanded at its price. Right? So consider uh, maybe hot dogs and hamburgers. Right? So if the price of hot dogs increases, then the demand for hamburgers increases. You say, well, I don't want hot dogs. The price just went up. I'll take hamburgers. That's fine. Right? And, and sort of we have the opposite for, for complements, right? Two goods that go together, right? An increase in the price of X would decrease the quantity of Y demanded at each price, right? Maybe hot dogs and hot dog buns, right? If the price of hot dogs decrease, oh, excuse me, if an increase in the price of hot dogs decreases the quantity of hot dog buns demanded, right? It makes sense. We can also think about income elasticity of demand, which is the percent change in demand for any good holding its price constant divided by the percent change in income. The responsiveness of demand to a change in income holding the good's relative price constant, right? And we're going to have another sort of uh, formula here, which is sort of just restating elasticity, but in a, a new light for income. All right, and here's a, another way we can calculated. This is kind of like the, I, I believe, the, the peanuts example that we did prior, but this is now talking about income, All right? So here's, here's something you can do to, uh, to uh, you know, test your knowledge on, on this. And here's the, the solution. So now we want to start talking just briefly about price elasticity of supply. And a lot of times in introduction to, to micro courses, we don't really spend too much on elasticity of supply because most of the things we talked about with uh, with elasticity of demand it can pretty much be applied to elasticity of supply. So here we have price elasticity of supply, which is the responsiveness of the quantity supplied uh, to change in its price. Right? It's the percent change in quantity supplied divided by the percent change in price. And we have a formula, of course, which is if you look back at the price elasticity of demand, it's almost identical, right? So we also want to classify uh, price elasticity of supply. We have perfectly elastic supply, uh, which is can be interpreted in a similar way as uh, as perfectly elastic demand. We have perfectly inelastic supply, which again can be interpreted in a similar way as demand. So we have this graph, which shows them off, and you'll notice it's it's almost identical to uh, to the demand graphs that we had, right? We also want to think again about length of time, but when we're talking about length of time here, we can be talking about uh, entry and exit as well, and different things that are related to supply, right? Price elasticity of supply and length of time. The longer the time allowed for adjustment the more resources can flow in and out of industry. We can have expansions also, right? And you might be thinking sort of about, uh, a lot of times when we're talking about supply, we usually have sort of a fixed factor, maybe capital. In the long run, that, that's not fixed, right? So we can, you know, have a bigger response to changes in prices. And here's a nice graph talking about uh, demand, uh, supply becoming more elastic over time.